Hi, this is Kendall Boyson, professional life and recovery coach, and you're listening to Encouragementology, the practice of instilling hope. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. On this show, you're receiving a promotion. Congratulations. From assistant to manager, putting you in charge of your own life. From strategy to tactical application, the decisions are yours. You're in charge. So what's your first move? You might need to spend a little time establishing yourself in your new role, which might mean communicating to those around you a new set of expectations. No longer will you take a back seat and let someone else drive. No longer will you doubt your ideas, seeking validation from others. No longer will you put things on the back burner, giving way to fear. You are the head honcho, and from this day forward, the choices are yours. Ready to move to the corner office? So let's start by determining where you are. Not necessarily physically. I hope you're in a safe, comfortable space, open to new ideas and perspectives. But I'm referring to logistically and emotionally on your journey. Is this a promotion for the first time in your life? Have you ever achieved management level where you're calling all the shots? No net, not answering to the chief of staff, just you. Or were you there and then for some reason, twists and turns of life, someone took the helm and you were demoted? Maybe you've gotten comfortable with being number two and not having to take responsibility for your life strategy. For some reason, along the way, you felt unqualified. Maybe you're at a crossroads, realizing life doesn't meet your expectations when you're not in charge of it. Taking a passive role, expecting aggressive actions is futile. If you want to see change, you have to be a change agent and make it happen. Now, you might be saying, hey, I pay all my own bills and make all my own decision. What is she talking about? I'm talking about a slight twist in perception. I want you to keep an open mind as we walk through these ideas. Think about your own experiences and when you might have deferred a decision or allowed someone else to lead the way. And then, why? If you're coupled up, it's natural to make joint decisions and even divvy up some responsibilities. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about being in charge of your thinking, having ideas you own, goals you set, and decisions, whether physical or mental, that you make. Sound reasonable? If you're already questioning who's really in charge, then this should help. 10 ways you might be giving other people too much power over your life without even realizing it by Amy Morin, found on Inc.com. After writing her book called 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do, Amy received thousands of emails from readers telling her which thing they struggled with most. The struggle people seemed to be able to relate to most was number two. Mentally strong people don't give away their power. It's something we all do sometimes. Maybe you let your coworker's bad mood ruin your day, or perhaps you let someone's criticism damage your self-image. Anytime you allow someone to have a negative influence over the way you think, feel, or behave, you give them power over your life. It will rob you of the mental strength you need to reach your greatest potential. Sometimes it's obvious when you give up your power. Losing your cool and doing something you regret is a prime example. But it's also possible to give up your power in more subtle ways. You might not even realize you're doing it. So here are 10 ways you might be giving away your personal power without even realizing it. Number one, you give in to guilt trips. If you change your behavior because someone tugs at your heartstrings, you give that individual power over you. Speak up, stick to your word, and don't give in even when someone tries to play on your emotions. Number two, 
You allow someone else's opinion of you to dictate your self-worth. Some people won't like you, and some people won't like your choices. You don't have to let their opinions affect how you feel about yourself. However, feeling bad about yourself based on what someone says or how that person feels about you gives that person too much power over you. Number three, you don't establish healthy boundaries. You decide who to allow into your life. If you grow resentful of people who take up too much of your energy, it's a sign you aren't setting clear boundaries. Establish clear physical, emotional, and financial boundaries. Number four, you complain about all the things you have to do. You also get to choose what to do with your time. You aren't forced to go to work, see the doctor, or attend a family gathering. There will be consequences if you don't do some of these things, but they're still your choices. Number five, you hold grudges. A grudge won't diminish the other person's life, but it can wreak havoc on your own. Holding on to anger from the past allows an individual to occupy space in your life. That's not to say you need to allow toxic people into your life. You shouldn't. Just don't waste your mental resources on them. Number six, you change your goals because you were rejected. Giving up after being rejected gives an individual the power to determine what you'll do with your life. Whether you got passed up for a promotion or turned down for a collaborative project, don't give up. Just because other people don't recognize your potential doesn't mean you can't succeed. Number seven, you set out to prove someone wrong. When someone doubts you, it can be tempting to set out to prove them wrong. Make sure your purpose is about your desire to succeed, not about convincing people that you're more valuable than they gave you credit for. Number eight, you let other people bring out the worst in you. You're going to run into people who have the ability to bring out the worst in you. These individuals may provoke you to say things you regret or pressure you to do things you wouldn't normally do. Stay true to your values and refuse to let others have a negative influence over you. Number nine, you invest time into talking about people that you don't like. Every minute you spend thinking about someone you don't like or complaining about someone you don't want to be around is 60 more seconds you give that person. Dwelling on negative people allows them power over your mind. Number 10, you work hard to avoid criticism. Feedback from others can be instrumental in helping you become your best. If you value other people's input too much, you may avoid doing anything that could lead to criticism. It's impossible to live your best life when you're focused on pleasing other people. So how do you take back your power? If you notice that you're giving away your power, you're not alone. Everyone does it sometimes. The good news is it's never too late to start taking back your power. Commit to becoming the driver rather than the passenger in your life. Make a conscious effort to stay in control of how you think, feel, and behave, and you'll help build the mental muscle you need to reach your greatest potential. I have always felt in charge of my life, labeling myself as fiercely independent. I'm outspoken and typically decisive when it comes to business, but I completely identify with more than five from that list. I'm a people pleaser, and even though I've spent a lot of time understanding that behavior and making changes based on my level of awareness, I can still stumble with those old and familiar feelings. In many aspects of my life, I crave validation. Ugh. I don't want to. Trust me, I can do something or create something and feel proud and comfortable. Why can't that feeling be enough? Why do I have to seek someone else's approval? Do you identify with that feeling? You did it. Yay, me. Oh, I love it. Sit with it. Sit with it. What do you think of it? Whammy. Now I'm sitting on the edge of my chair hoping they love it as much as I love it. 
Will they ever? If they don't, what should this mean to me? Am I setting myself up for self-doubt and hurt feelings? Hey, it's okay to ask someone else's opinion, but if you struggle with the behavior I just described, you know it's waiting for more than looks good. You felt that uncomfortable feeling as I was role-playing, right? What about not asking and waiting for someone to notice what you've done? Oh, a whole new level of uncomfortableness. You can't relax because you're wondering what they're thinking and why they haven't said anything. Is it because they don't like it? Don't care? Why haven't they said anything? Sit with it. Sit with it. So what do you think? Is it good? Good job. Ah, thank you. Sound familiar? Hmm. Overcoming an approval-seeking personality and low self-esteem is something that we all need to figure out. So I found an article on ownyourbest.com, and it's from Maggie. Struggling with low self-esteem or an approval-seeking personality, does that sound like you? You're not alone. It's common to want to feel validated at times. I feel validated just hearing that. (laughs) But if seeking approval is when your self-esteem and overall well-being are riding on the opinions of others, it's time to learn how to let go of this temporary high. To put a stop to seeking validation from the outside, you need to work on your self-acceptance and respect from, wait for it, yes, the inside. Now, what is an approval-seeking personality? I mean, I explained a little bit of it, but many of us struggle with insecure feelings. The desire to belong, respected, acknowledged, or praised for a job well done, or simply wanting to be understood is very common. While seeking approval is part of a human nature, it can also go unrealized and become a serious obstacle to being your authentic self. So it's important to do a self-awareness check and identify if this belief system, seeking validation mindset, and low self-esteem interferes with your self-worth, productivity, and happiness. Once you do recognize that your self-esteem and self-worth are dependent on how you believe others see you, it's time to zero in on why you feel this way and learn how to let go of this insecure mindset. Low self-esteem and insecurity can hold anyone back from living an authentic life. Those feelings quickly manifest to behaviors of constantly seeking approval. What's also important to know is that the need for validation does not discriminate. For teens, seeking approval may come in the form of wearing the right clothes. As for men, approval seeking may translate to making enough money. For the wealthy, the seeking approval psychology may be the way one displays their wealth and thus their happiness. What if you're not wealthy? Well, then it may be trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know, as to belong, be desirable, or to be perceived as wealthy. So to help dig a little deeper, here are three key ideas to reflect on when talking about low self-image and its dependency on others' validation. Think about the kind of approval you seek. Is it appearance, wealth, success, love, worthiness? Know that overcoming the need for approval is not about changing others in your life. However, a toxic environment may be a component. Your self-worth journey begins and ends with you. Dig deep and determine the type of approval-seeking personality you identify with most. What is holding you back from your authenticity? I found an article on livebrazen.com that describes seven approval-seeking personality types This might help you identify or become more aware of what motivates your need for external validation. Hero worshiper. Helper. Perfectionist. Chameleon. Performer. Hater. Scaredy cat. 
Keep in mind that these approval-seeking personality types aren't meant to be mutually exclusive categories. You may find some overlap or that there are circumstances when you identify with some more than others. Overall, this is just meant to be a useful way to kickstart overcoming your need for validation or tendency to be dependent on others' approval to validate your self-worth. Okay, assuming we have that in control. (laughs) Oh, if it were only that easy, right? Remember, awareness might seem as overused as mindfulness, but it's a critical step if you want to see real change in your life. Change starts with you and only happens if you first evaluate where you are and what you need to do to get moving in the right direction. This new direction is great, but never really a clear path, void of any challenges. Understanding yourself and your tendencies is an awareness that can help you navigate the best path and give you the tools you need to modify, re-engineer, or simply dust yourself off and try again. Being mindful gives you the chance to learn new things about yourself every day. It gives you freedom to get lost in your own thoughts, to fantasize outcomes, and visualize what needs to happen to get you where you want to go. Spend some time with yourself, wondering, and problem solving. Don't be so quick to defer to another person. You have the power. Mo Sitaptim gives some ideas on how to take charge of your own life found on thehappinessplanner.com. We all can admit that it's hard to one day break out of our shell and start taking responsibility for our own life, especially if we've always had someone to rely on to help make these things happen for us, or if we've been engaged in the stability and comfort of that certain thing that makes us happy for far too long, like a job that kills our soul but pays pretty well, maybe a roller coaster relationship. There are two different scenarios, but both require the same action. Deciding what you're going to do to take charge of your own life. What we need to realize is that by staying in comfort because it's less scary, less terrifying, and more convenient, we let others take away our own personal power. When you always rely on something or someone to help you all the time, You don't grow your own personal power. Whatever is sharpened gets sharper. Whatever we focus on expands. Whatever we exercise gets stronger. If we never, ever do things on our own and just rely on luck, someone, or something else to help change our situation, we would never get to exercise our own courage, self-discipline, and build our self-confidence. Now, are you ready to start taking charge of your own life? Here's how you can start doing so. Number one, realize that it's important to start taking charge of your own life. Whoever you rely on, whether it's your parents, partner, friend, or job, they're not going to be there for us forever and not 100% of the time. One day they may leave us, One day, they may pass away. Then what happens? You may feel like breaking down if you've always relied on them for help. When that suddenly happens, it will not be easy for you to adjust. You will not have the inner power and capability to deal with the weight of matter that life throws at you. Building one's mental strength takes time. It's like building muscles. You're not going to be muscular after lifting weights for a week. It takes months and years of practice and stamina training. Our brain is the same. Our mind is the same. Our soul is the same. You need to start taking care of it and building its strength so that it can be ready to tackle when you really need it to be. Number two, say no to help. Some of us are blessed with family and friends who always want to help us. 
It's a blessing and it's also a curse because you'd never get to start taking complete charge of your own life until they take their hands off of you. (laughs) Some people find satisfaction and fulfillment in life by helping others. God bless them. (laughs) To them, helping others is a way to build a bond and connection with other human beings. But what they don't realize is sometimes their help is making others weak and staying in the state of being weak and helpless. I know you've heard, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. It is very true. And staying on that same line, if our parents always cook for us, how will we know how to cook ourselves? We need to learn to cook so that we can cook when they're no longer there. Translate that into however you like. The earlier we can learn to say no and decide to take charge of our own life, the better. Those kind of friends and families might freak out at first as their helping hands get rejected, but explain to them that you love them, but you want to start building your own strength and deal with life's problems on your own. Sometimes the best thing you can do to get yourself into discomfort and start growing is to move somewhere new so that asking for help becomes harder to do so. It can be scary but it would surely build your mental strength, independence, self-reliance, and increase your ability to listen to no one else but your own intuition and the voice in your own head and heart. Number three, say no to choices that make you unhappy. Sometimes it's easy to keep staying where we are even though it makes us unhappy. This is because the soul-sucking situation provides some sort of comfort. Comfort that comes with not making change. Comfort with the familiar. Comfort with the known and the predictable. But unless we start taking charge of our life and building our courage and get up and leave the current situation, life will never get any easier. Only when you build your strength does life get easier. And strength does not magically grow. It needs to be built. When we're scared of making change, it most likely means that we overestimate the cost of taking risks. We imagine the worst possible outcome, which constantly makes us scared and keeps us in our own shell. Imagining the worst outcome and not taking the plunge is the result of not believing in your own personal power. But let's face it, you will not have the power until you build it. We are who we confidently tell ourselves we are. We are who we practice and build ourselves to be. Staying in the state of helplessness, we enable our weakness to get stronger and our strength to get weaker. Just like the heart and legs get stronger the more you run, the mind also gets stronger as you build its own power through practice. Number four, realize that you only have the power you decide to build. You aren't born with personal power. We build it. You may be scared of making change because you don't feel confident in your abilities. Whatever you want to have, you have to build. So if you want to be confident, you need to practice confidence and put yourself through challenges where you can grow your confidence. If you want to be more courageous, Put yourself into situations where you have to get out of your comfort zone. If you want to be smarter, surround yourself with people smarter than you and just commit to learning. If you want to be strong, you need to practice and grow your muscles and mind. If you want to be sociable, go to social events more often until it feels more comfortable and start conversations with strangers. If you want to be open-minded, Learn to listen to different opinions and beliefs with the intention to understand without judgment. If you want to be patient and calm, put yourself into situations where you have to wait and force yourself to stay calm and relaxed. We were born a blank canvas. Those with traits and characteristics you wish you had weren't born with those either. They had to go through experiences that help them build them. And you too can build whatever you wish to have. Number five, know that life is a journey. 
A lot of us are scared of taking charge of our own life because we're scared that we may fail and we may make mistakes. So we stay in our own comfort zone because it feels safer. If you really want to start taking charge of your own life, you need to trust in fate, in destiny, and most importantly, in yourself. Remove the fear, doubt, and expectation that life will always go as planned. Change your perception and your mindset towards life from expecting it to be perfect to hoping for inner strength to deal with whatever comes and for adaptability so that you can adjust with the lens you need to look at the world. Whatever happens in life, you will be okay. You will be fine. Positive events come in to give us joy. Negative events come in to be our teachers. Disappointments come in to close the door that's wrong for us and to push us into a direction to find a door that is right for us. When you look at life this way, you won't fear mistakes and disappointments as much. Instead, you will learn to embrace them and feel empowered. After all, you're in control of your own destiny. And whether this statement is true or not, it starts with you deciding to take charge of your own life. It's all a mindset shift. Isn't that comforting? You haven't signed the deed over or are facing a long legal battle to get your rights back. Just somewhere, somehow, you gave up and let someone else lead. That could be a person close to you, negative influences you encountered, media headlines you believed, or social media expectations you've fallen short of. Now, instead of leading the charge, you're trying to find comfort in where you've settled, hoping that things will get better. Have you ever heard, when life hands you lemons? Do you really think that life is dealing in lemons? That there is this fruit stand of life and we're all in line for a bag of lemons or bad things? Or someone on the street corner saw you walk by and thought you needed a bag of lemons, so they just handed them over. Now what? Well, the saying goes, you make lemonade. You don't sit there looking at that bag of lemons until they rot, wondering, why me? You solve the problem with the first logical solution. You proactively take control. But a mind shift could be that lemonade is actually reactive to being handed the lemons. And that you didn't just get lemons handed to you out of the blue, but that they're a part of your journey. And being prepared to react accordingly is part of being in control. Now, who wants lemonade? On Hildy's blog, inspiredbyhildy.com, we continue this rally cry with her article, Be in Charge of Your Life! Exclamation mark. What does it mean to be in charge of your own life? In one sentence, it means that you are being true to yourself and your life purpose. It also means that you're taking charge of everything about your life and that there never was or is anyone but yourself to blame for anything that you experience. It means that no matter what you are living right now, you know it's up to you to change it. It's always up to you. Taking charge of one's life is the single most important shift of perception towards living a life free of suffering and despair. Yes, a shift of perception. Giving away one's power is about the mindset. Every time we feel disempowered, we have given away our power. This means that every time you feel frustrated or angry about something that anyone else said or did, you have given away your power. What others say or do has nothing to do with you. You hold the key to your own emotions. You are the boss of your inner terrain, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Everything you do, say, or feel is 100% your responsibility. Now, that's true freedom. Taking charge also means taking full responsibility. We've been led to believe that others are responsible and that they know better. 
We've been taken off the job as the one who knows the best for us, and we're disconnected from our inner knowing. Think of it this way. If you're the one that knows what's best for you, and no one else could ever be to blame for anything that you experience, wouldn't you like yourself to be in charge? I would most certainly like to be the one that was on top of my game. If I was the only one living my life, I realized that I was the one that had created the situation and only I could choose to change it. So here are signs that you're in charge of your life. It also might show you if you're not in charge of your life. You know that it is you that has to change, to change anything in your life. Your health becomes your own responsibility. Educating yourself and thinking of yourself becomes a priority. Being true to yourself first becomes natural. You make choices based on your own inner guidance and research. What other people think is no longer important. You have a strong sense of who you are and where you're going. Fear is no longer the driving force in your life. You are taking action towards your goals. You have no need to follow anyone, blame anyone, or point fingers at anyone. Being the boss of your own life feels like true freedom. You never feel like a victim. You realize how amazing you are just being you. Life is so much better when you know that you are the one in charge of your life. We are who we choose to become and every second of every day holds the potential to take charge of our own destiny. So here are a few tips on how to take charge of your life. First, make a choice. Decide that you are the boss of your life and that only you can do what's needed to live the life you want and need. Once you make a decision, stay with it and keep your focus. Give yourself time and realize that everything is going to be okay. Number two, be the authority. We are so used to listening to others that hearing our own voice can be hard. Let go of needing everybody's opinion and validation and listen more to you. This doesn't mean that you won't need advice and guidance, but never give the power away and always follow your own intuition. Make your own decisions no matter what others might think or say. Number three, get educated. It's important to do your own research about any topic that involves your life. There are so many opinions out there and so much information only you can find what resonates with you. You're the one that will be living the outcome of every decision you make, so make sure you're in charge of it. Number four, take action. Every transformation requires action. We can think of all the positive thoughts we want, but without action, there's no progress. Get going, and once you take a stand, once you know what you want, walk towards it. And don't be afraid of failure. Act like you mean it. Number five, be your own cheerleader. Be your own best friend and support. Speak highly of yourself and think empowering thoughts. Try to eliminate any complaining and be proud that you're taking charge and being the best boss of your life. Once we see how valuable we are, we also see the same in others. This means that we can be a great supporters for others as well. Number six, let go of your past. Letting go of anything that is holding you back will make a huge shift in your ability to move forward. The past has no bearing on the future or the now if we don't carry it with us. It's obstructing the flow, and it's like carrying a heavy luggage with something you do not want to own. Once you're free from any burden of past experiences, the freedom will empower you to make better decisions in the now. Start today. The only time and the best time is always now. Procrastination takes us nowhere. It's merely a resistance to change. 
analyze why you would resist any change, and work on setting goals for your life and your health today. Self-empowerment is about taking charge and responsibility. Through feeling powerful, one becomes fearless. When one becomes fearless, life becomes limitless. If you want something to change, change something. Start now and don't waste another minute feeling less than great. If you want to share encouragementology with a friend who needs to know they are not alone in this journey of self-discovery, you can visit encouragementology.com or anywhere you stream your content to receive this episode and all others. Follow us on Facebook for additional encouragement throughout the week. So I challenge you, evaluate your current role in your life to determine if you're assisting someone else in making decisions or if you're in fact taking a management role in owning your own life. You have the power to be strategic and tactical, actively leading your own journey. I know you can do it. Thank you for listening to Encouragementology with Kendall Boyson, where we find positive ways to handle some of life's challenges. Someone through until the path was clear. That's when I found you. How I wound up.